Good morning, it's Wednesday, starting my day, 10 a.m., starting with a Facebook Live in my one of my favorite groups right now. The Facebook Live is over now. It's about the strength finder uh, topic. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. You can make an assessment and uh, it will tell you what kind of talents you have, your kind of strengths. There is a Polish group on Facebook where uh, Dominik Juszczyk is a very active person and he's sharing his knowledge about that. And also <laughs> right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of an interface to a Ruby script which I wrote. Um, for the benefit of the group I wrote a script which shows people who have similar strengths to you and uh, it was a quick hack but without a user interface so far so I'm helping manually by just you know running providing the input the first name the last name and the script returns so what who are the people similar and which strengths they share so that's my plan for the next 10 minutes all right so I have helped uh, four more people with sending them the output from the Ruby program. It's actually a nice story because uh, uh, the, the the Facebook group was relying on a, is relying on an X, on a Google spreadsheet and you could fill the, a new row with your data and then you could use some filtering to find people who are similar to you. But I'm really, really bad at Excel. So I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll download this file uh, to CSV and locally I will parse it, run a Ruby script and then I will see the output and you know in, in a formatted way, which I like. And once I did it, I shared it with the group and suddenly, the, apparently, other people also had problems with the Google spreadsheet. So uh, they asked me to, to generate the output. So somehow I created the MVP. It was two hours of coding and the MVP is working and I can help some people. Uh, it's a Ruby script, it's not a Rails script. Uh, but what I'm thinking is that, like how to plug it in into a Rails application right now so that there would be a web interface and it would be more automated. However, I think there is still some value that that there is like a human interaction. People ask me to help them and I'm happy to help them because it's not a big deal to me. Uh, so maybe it's sometimes I'm better to not to have a user interface in the form of the form, but in the form of the real human. Maybe during the, those new times, we kind of forget about this ways. I'm, I'm not sure. Oops, and I will almost forget uh, to tell you, I'm using Todoist today. So I'm actually tracking my tasks today. Not a common thing during my day. And now a uh, coding session uh, on a client project. Uh, I found a situation where we, we have the split between unit tests and integration tests. And the integration tests are actually more like production tests slash monitoring. And we try to limit those uh, integration tests, those production tests so that they are faster. But on the other hand, I think each module, each, I don't know, part of the interface maybe should be covered with at least some tests so that we have at least some coverage at the integration level. Uh, and I have introduced a regression last week because, uh, well, it was my fault mostly, but if there was an integration test then I would probably do more thinking before breaking this stuff. So I'm trying to cover this place with tests and then I can uh, add some new fixes in this area. And as it often happens <laughs> while working on my uh, current uh, bug, I also, during preparing the situation, how to discover the bug better, uh, I also discovered another bug, which was there in the application. So uh, the thing I can do and which I did is to fill a bug report to the Pivotal. We were using Pivotal for that. And I provided the details how I was able to get to the bug. Once the story is created, I can decouple from it. It's not, my, it's not really part of my story. If this fix was, was super simple, I would fix it, but it's not. And I need to focus on the thing that I, that was prioritized for me. So there are several techniques which I tried to practice during my developer work. And one of them was that uh, I really like to push my code often, commit and push. So within my one hour session, I will have sometimes five or six commits. And sometimes I was commits to my local repository, but I also believe it's worth to push the comments to the actual repository, to the production, well, to the main repository, which in our case triggers a deploy and running the production test, and unit test and the production test. Uh, so this is a good practice because I will have a constant feedback. On the other hand, I have another practice which is uh, it's great and we try to promote it within RKNC. It's great if you can work async way so that you don't have to be on Slack all the time or you are not interrupted. Uh, however, if you are constantly committing and pushing, which as I said, I believe is a good practice, 
then you would have a risk that maybe you are breaking some stuff uh, if everything else is automated and the code goes continuously deployed and delivered there is a risk that you have broken something or that the monitoring tells you that this something is wrong so in a way this is my exception to this async rule uh, I think as programmers with, with the setup as we have at ArcNC, we don't really have a separate DevOps people or sysadmin people. So we are responsible for monitoring too. And while it's okay not to be active on Slack for, for the ongoing communication because you want to focus on, on your work, at the same time, we should, I think we should all be responsible that you know everything works fine. So I still want to commit and push very often. But if I have broken something, then I really want to get the feedback. And now this feedback, this should be a way of alerting me that even though I have, I don't know, continued with my work, this work needs to be interrupted because it's more important now to fix the, uh, the production problem. Now, this relies on the situation that we can trust our monitoring and we can trust our continuous integration, that it doesn't fail for wrong reasons. And it's not an easy thing to have, but once you have it, it's fantastic because you can work very quickly and you know that if something happens, you will know it and you will know it only when something important happens, not about some random issues, for example. So random builds are a big no-no in this case. Um, and this is what happens right now, but I actually, this is a more complicated case because apparently by writing a new integration test, I was able to introduce some kind of inconsistency in the system, which is showing a bigger, bigger problem here. But even though I, there is, usually there is no way by, by introducing a test to break your system, but given that we have uh, the production test, this actually happened. And I need to interrupt my work now to fix the problem. That's the, that's the short answer here. And that's what I'm doing right now. break in the forest actually close to the main road uh, on a bike so what I did I have fixed a build problem actually it's not a build problem it's a product it was a real production problem which was shown by the metrics mm. the main prior was on actually obviously fixing the problem uh, which in our case is shown by our green build because the tests are running against the production system uh, I was a bit stuck, so I listed all my options and all I know and my hypothesis. Then I asked my colleague to join me for a sync call, Tomek, and it was very useful. You know, the whole rubber duck debugging, so we can tell to someone. Uh, but in this case, Tomek actually was, has, has, has had a good advice uh, uh, based on his experiences with the system. And he advised me which one, which part of the project might be uh, problematic. So I restarted this one and it fixed the root problem. Uh, it fixed the, the problem of you know, the system being not stable. So now, now it's okay. Now I have a list of things to, to, uh, to try and maybe improve uh, for later cases in terms of our monitoring metrics, DevOps stuff. So uh, I took a bike to, you know, break so that I can refresh my mind. Uh, also refresh my mind in terms of listening to a podcast which is uh, chess related so to reset my mind and then I will be back at uh, coding again. So back at coding, uh, all is going well. I've also updated my changes from uh, what Tomek did in the project and the nice things today, our multiple microservices system got uh, improved by removing one of the microservices. And I don't want to start the whole microservices or not debate because there are many good things about microservices and I'm overall a big fan of the distributed architectures. However, if the architecture is architecture boundaries are split not in the right places, then the microservices bring more problems than benefits. So in our case, the, the place where which we kind of merged, well, we merged the right side into the microservice which handles all the writes, so the commands, and we put the read models, uh, the reads to the read model microservice. So we, can, we know, you know, tends to go more into like one microservice for reads, one microservice for, for writes, because reads are usually more often, so they need to scale more maybe. Uh, so a big debate, microservices or not, but it's always, better to focus on a specific situation, specific example, discuss, decide and apply the plan. And now we have just removed the microservices, so pretty cool. Now when 
almost all went great. Uh, I have this kind of Schrodinger test or Schrodinger behavior when I don't put the log statements in it works as I would expect to work and when I add logs to see some details inside then it stops working. This is so typical to the work for, of developers. <laughs> it's just, as you can see today, it's like a constant struggle, constant change of what kind of problem now I have to debug. And I, I saw a tweet recently that uh, debugging is a scene of crime and you have to find the murderer, but you know you are the mur murderer. Ale mama mi zdała jedno takie do zrobienia przedszkola. Mm -hmm.